Hello dear viewers, I am a global nationalist. This means I support nationalism, not just in my country, India, but all over the globe. And so today is the second Saturday of the month, and so I will be discussing about Indian nationalism in general. Today I want to talk about Indian nationalism from a political perspective, which is why I will be discussing about the most prominent political figure in India at the moment, which is Narendra Modi. Narendra Damodar Das Modi is the current and 14th Prime Minister of India, ruling from 2014 um, onwards. He was previously the Chief Minister of Gujarat from 2001 to 2014. He was he basically replaced Keshubhai Patel in 2001, October 2001, as the Chief Minister of Gujarat because the BJP feared that Mr. Patel was becoming unpopular due to uh, his handling of the Bhuj earthquake and also because of his ill health. And so they decided to uh, replace him with Modi. Modi uh, was became a member of the state legislative assembly when he was elected in a by-election in the soon in 2002 early 2002 now his biggest first challenge as Gujarat chief minister came uh, when uh, the riots began and uh, in February this, these riots were first caused by a train being set on fire, uh, which was coming from Ayodhya, where certain Hindu pilgrims had gone to do a religious ceremony in the site where the Babri Masjid Mosque was demolished. They were praying and uh, giving blessings for a temple of Lord Ram to be built on that spot because previously, like hundreds of years ago, or about 500 years ago, the Mughal Emperor Babur destroyed the Ram temple that was there and had a mosque built in his name, named the Babri Masjid, built over its the remains of the temple. This has been proven by the Archaeological Survey of India in 2003, but was long believed and to be true by Hindus throughout the centuries. Um, so this angered some Muslims who felt that this was somehow a self that the destruction of the Babri Masjid, which was in 1992, which at the time was illegal, not sanctioned by any court or government, they felt that this was somehow an anti-Muslim activity and so they organized a mob to attack the train when it came to a station in Gohodra. Uh, they set fire to the train and killed uh, 60 Hindu pilgrims within who were burnt alive in the trains, in the train. Uh, on this day, this uh, Narendra Modi, who was chief minister at that time, spoke on Gujarat state television, asking people to remain calm, to not get aggravated, to not take the law into their own hands, and to allow the government to punish those responsible. Now, uh, uh, as a whole, the state remained peaceful, but there were pockets of violence that erupted and this between Hindus and Muslims and was one of the worst resulted one of the worst riots in India's history in which around 1,100 people died uh, 700 Hindus I mean, 700 Muslims and 300 Hindus and this uh, now the reason that this these riots are so infamous in Indian political history and modern history 
is because there were several accusations leveled against uh, Modi that he was complicit in these riots. Now, these accusations were leveled by the opposition party, the Congress, other opposition parties like the CPA, Communist Party of India, the Dravida, Dravida, Kadigam, DMK, and other leftist parties in India who basically made Modi look like a, a mass murderer of Muslims. That's what they presented him as. And this was also fueled by the mainstream media in India, which was at that time largely controlled by the Congress, such as NDTV uh, and headlines today were very these channels and the newspapers like the Hindu the and other newspaper and news magazines like India today were very uh, pro Congress and anti Hindutva and anti BJP. Like at that time there was not much balance in the newspapers. The BJP the right wing didn't have a presence for media, a strong media presence. And so the media also cast Modi as complicit in the riots. Basically, the accusation was that he allowed uh, Hindus to riot against Muslims and kill Muslims. This narrative and was supported by the Western media, uh, such as the New York Times, the BBC. And this led to his visa being revoked by the United States government and he was also banned entry into several Western countries. However, other countries like Japan and China kept him, let him uh, visit, let him arrive in their countries. Now, the question that uh, arises is whether he indeed was responsible. Now, this was investigated by several agencies First, uh, it was investigated by the Gu Gujarat government, which is, uh, which created a commission called the Nanavati Commission, which was headed by a uh, former retired Supreme Court justice named uh, Mr. Nanavati. And this commission began in to investigate the matter and came out to report in 2014 that there was no evidence against Narendra Modi and that he had taken all uh, necessary steps to control the violence. The Supreme Court appointed a special investigation team to investigate the issue and found again that he was not guilty that there was no reason to prosecute him even there wasn't even enough evidence to prosecute him they had uh this investigation began in 2008 and ended in 2012 so and he was also investigated by the media and by various ngos such as human rights watch human rights watch also did not find any evidence and in fact, what people did find out was that he actually had taken several measures to uh, stop, if not stop, but at least to control the violence. For example, on the night that the riot, the first on the first day that the riots began, he had asked the government of Maharashtra and. Uh, I think one other local uh, near neighboring state's government to dispatch police forces to help control the riots. Maharashtra was at that time controlled and ruled by the Congress party who refused. And he also, he eventually, he also asked the central government to deploy the army on the first day. However, they did not come because at that time, the Indian army was in a standoff with Pakistan on the border due to a terrorist attack on the Indian parliament in the previous year, 2001. So 
he basically had to control the situation with just his own police force and he w gave shoot at sight orders there were several preventive arrests made uh, preventive detentions made and there was and even the rss in its newspaper the organizer newsletter asked for peace to be maintained and did not uh, call for violence however despite their best efforts violence did continue and continued for about th uh, two to three days on the second day of rioting the army came in and by the third day they had mar march pasts and uh, the riots ended this shows that what does it, so what does this show that it shows that he was not or trying to massacre the muslims of gujarat he was actually doing his best to protect them and hindus in gujarat who were also attacked by muslims in that uh, in those riots and so both communities suffered that it's not fair to say that only muslims suffered and ignore the hindus who lost their lives and were injured and however and so because the supreme court held him uh, not guilty but not even guilty enough to prosecute the indian public pretty much uh for uh let the issue go now some of them had most of his hard the hardcore bjp supporters had already uh known beforehand that he was innocent and did not even support the uh, uh accusations M middle of the road indians who were a little if you didn't like the congress but were looking but were not completely supportive of modi because of the criticism that he received also after the verdict after the this, uh, result the cites report began to support it began to see him in a better light however there's a small section of indians who are like hardcore congress supporters who and not just congress supporters but also leftists in general like people who are slightly anti-hindu they fu fund like virulently claim that modi is still responsible Although they've not been able to prove any of those claims in any investigation, they still won't accept that he's innocent. However, the majority of Indians did accept the results of the report and voted for him in 2014. That was the first Indian election in which I properly paid attention. I was 18 at that time, and I remember it very well. It was amazing look it was almost not an election it was like a pretty much a walkover for modi he basically captured the imagination of the indian people by showing the work he had done in gujarat the economic progress he created the industries that were set up the development he brought up the infrastructure he built which and gujarat became one of india's top states during his tenure and still is one of india's top performing states in economic indices social indices and um yeah so this image this uh the gujarat model is what it was called called at that time made people believe that he could replicate in india on, on the national stage what he had done on the state level and also the fact that he was nationalistic against national against pakistan and china who were claiming in the territory and he also was not someone who supported muslim appeasement for example he famously said that he would not wear 
a skull cap, which is a Muslim headgear. Uh, not, and he said that I, I will not wear a skull cap because I am not a Muslim. He did not mean to say that he was that there was anything wrong with being Muslim, that he was anti-Muslim. He just wasn't going to appease Muslims like that. And so, and he did support Hindu causes like the Ram Mandir, giving citizenship to Hindu refugees from uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. And so this appealed to the hardcore vote BJP voters and the development um, the development story that he uh, made <coughs> that he spread sorry for that I have a bit of a cough so the development that he promised Indians was uh, appealed to the wider voter base, which is why uh, he won, along with the absolute disillusion that the Indian people had with Congress, like uh, who were just mired in corruption, in economic decline, growth was slow at that time there wasn't uh, and terrorist attacks were common uh the and pakistan ceasefire violations by pakistan were common and china would intrude into our territory regularly and basically congress was pretty much ha didn't actually stand a chance in that election I remember talking about it with my friends about just casually in class asking if we weren't of voting age at that time and I asked them if you could vote who would you some would say ah I'm not be party some would say BJP but none would say Congress like if when I when we spoke about Congress we would basically laugh like giggle that's how what they were perceived at that time completely pathetic basically and to see how he's impacted nationalism in the country the we have to kind of look at the trends that occurred post 2014 election we can see that he by he was very honest about him being a Hindu and that he and he didn't shy away from that and the BJP and while he himself he focused on mostly on development the RSS and the BJP supported Hindutva they spread the Hindutva ideas and thoughts throughout the population and these ideas and beliefs became more and more popular people started reading up what had uh, happened in Indian history uh, that had not been told to us with, under the Congress government. For example, the atrocities committed by Muslim kings and emperors in India's history and we learned about more about Indian like India's culture and heritage, Hindu, Hindu values became more popular, yoga, Modi popular uh, promoted yoga at the national level and later at the international level when he went to the United Nations and proposed an idea to have an international yoga day on every June 21st of the year, which was passed by the UN and has become an actual day on the international calendar. And so we can see how and India people became proud of India's culture, India's heritage, its traditions, which not that Indians weren't proud, but simply put, Indians were before having a bit of an in since independence, actually, they've had a colonial hangover. Uh, 
basically an insecurity complex where they sought validation from foreign countries, specifically in the West. They were not confident in their own country. This decreased post-1991 when economic reforms resulted in the liberalization of the economy, which caused a growth in the uh, economic growth. However, at that from 1991 to 2014, India was largely ruled by the Congress or uh, with the BJP ruling for about one, uh, only one full term at that during that period, and that did not majority. And so, yeah, um, I'm sorry, I have a fever at the moment. I'm just not feeling well. Yeah, so this basically Indians during Prime Minister Modi's tenure have become more confident. They, if say a uh, foreign media house or web newspaper or uh, news TV show uh, criticize India for any reason, you'll see Indians in the comment section actually speaking out, defending India against it which wasn't so prominent in the past. And sometimes this becomes hyper-rationalistic. Indians take any sort of tiny little criticism by the foreigners as criticism of a whole country. Not all Indians do this. A few Indians do this, which I disapprove of. I think we should be more tolerant of other, of criticism. But the this was when the Western press would basically disrespect India, demean India, portray India in poor light. Like they would say things like Indians, India is becoming an intolerant country. India is becoming the rape capital of the country and such uh, propaganda like that. Basically anything to that would really make India look bad, not just proper uh, well-intentioned criticism Indians actually spoke back against it which was not something that would, was seen very often before and the fact that Modi was so openly Hindu uh, was embraced by the opposition parties eventually at, at first they opposed him saying he's communal he's anti-Muslim and they thought that would win them votes, but for, throughout various state elections, the Congress lost, and so did the other opposition parties like Samajwadi Party, the Bahujan Samaj Party, Apmayawati, and others who also lost elections. And BJP started gaining power in states that they had never ruled before, such as Assam and in Jammu and Kashmir. So the opposition parties saw that being anti-Hindu and pro-Muslim wasn't working. So they became more open to Hindu uh, concerns. They started supporting, They, for example, Rahul Gandhi stated that openly that he was a Hindu and that specifically he was a Brahmin Hindu and that he was very religious, which he had never said before. He had always uh, been a secular Hindu, uh, always seen as pro-Muslim. Now he's been trying to reduce that image. The when the so when the Supreme Court passed its verdict in the Ayodhya dis, uh, dispute in favor of building the Ram Temple, the Ram Mandir. The opposition parties actually supported it when they had earlier opposed it and supported the reconstruction of the Babri Masjid. So here we can see how Modi has politically spread na Hindu nationalism throughout the political sphere in India. Now we should look, if we can look beyond politics, we can look at, say, cinema. Uh, Indian cinema movies like 
first from Bollywood, started producing more patriotic content. Akshay Kumar, an Indian actor, lead actor, uh, made films like Baby, Holiday, and other uh, patriotic movies, which showed which well, which showed the Indian army, Indian spies, fighting terrorists, basically Pakistani terrorists, and basically were very patriotic. Uh, Ajay Devgan made a movie called Tanaji Dansang Warrior, which was about uh, Tanaji Malusari, who was a general in the army of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, who was the emperor of the Maratha Empire. Uh, the Marathas and Tanaji in, as a general fought against the uh, Mughal Empire at that time and Ajay Devgan acted as Tanaji in that film and in that movie the Mughals were portrayed as uh, the best villains which was not always done in Indian cinema. Indian cinema has often portrayed the Mughals as very as kind of peace loving for example in Jodha Akbar Akbar the Mughal Emperor Akbar is seen as a very tolerant kind Muslim ruler which is not the entire truth in reality however not Tanaji was still not a fully fully Hindu supporting film it did somewhat appease Muslims but even showing the Mughal Empire in negative light was a big change and hopefully they Bollywood will make more movies like this and be, and movies like Bah like uh, Bahubali, which were produced by in Telugu and then dubbed in other Indian languages like Tamil and Hindi, became smash hits throughout in India, even though it was just a regional film. It was a fictional movie, but set in the ancient Indian past and showed Indian culture and traditions in a very good light, which was not always what. Indian cinema show which people appreciate it. So we can also see in Sanjay Lila Bansavi, who's a veteran filmmaker, who made two films in the recent past, Bajira Mastani and Padmavat, which were based on the historical figures of ba Peshwa Bajira, who was the the leader of the Maratha Empire and Rani Padmavati who was the queen of the Mewar kingdom of Rajputs who based and in these films Muslims were shown as the villains and even though Sanjay Dilbansal himself is not has never actually previously shown uh, uh, to be pro-Hindu in any way, somehow because the culture, the social climate changed, he started going along with it and these films were both smash hits. Although they were, Bajira Mastani has been criticized for showing ba Bajira more in a romantic manner and less focus on his uh, military and uh, his uh, role as a ruler i personally don't agree with this criticism but that's a separate issue this isn't the film channel so yeah this is what i think of the and so we can see how modi has also impacted um bollywood and indian cinema from various all languages even though he is not involved in film in any way but all because he supports nationalism in, and nationalism has become more popular in India. And yeah, so we can see in how one man can have such a big positive impact on his country. I hope that this can inspire you as an Indian to work for your country, to help your country, even if you don't 
did not vote for Modi, don't plan to vote for Modi. I hope you can see some of the truth in what I've said and will be inspired to make India an even better country. I myself am inspired by this and this is one of the reasons, in fact, it's possible if Modi was not prime elected that I would never have made this channel. And so I wish Prime Minister Modi success in all his future endeavors as Prime Minister. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to talk about today. So yeah, thank you for watching. Vande Matra.